Let's get right into this list. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have Mount Athos. This mountain and peninsula isn't only off limits to human females, but just every kind of female animal out there. This rule has been in place for more than a thousand years, so I don't really see this one changing at any time soon. This mountain is home to a monastery which houses about 2,000 monks, which is where this female band comes from. There have been women in the past who have snuck into the area in order to protest, but it has always been met with an outcry from the monks who say that the presence of the female not only alter these social dynamics, but slow their path to spiritual enlightenment. I'm not exactly sure how to feel about this one, as I can definitely respect people's religious practices and wouldn't want anyone coming into my path of enlightenment, but this ban, of course, also includes me. In coming in at number nine, we have Snake Island. With a name like that, who would even want to visit it? And as you probably guessed, it is covered in snakes. This island is apparently home to around 4,000 snakes. Most most of them being golden lancehead vipers, aka one of the deadliest serpents in the world. It's said that this type of viper can grow up to 18 inches long, and it's so poisonous that one bite can kill you within an hour. As a result, the Brazilian government has banned anyone from ever going there. If you do, well, chances are you won't make it back alive. Legend goes that a fisherman arrives at the island in search of bananas, but was found days later in his boat dead in a pool of his own blood. Then from 1909 to the 1920s, a family lived on the island to run the lighthouse. But according to another legend, the entire family was found dead after a group of snakes came into their home and attacked them. So like I said before, you don't ever want to go to this island. Moving on to number 8, we have Area 51. Of course this had to be on the list. Area 51 is a top secret government facility that is illegal for the public to visit. Anyone that does try to trespass can be charged, arrested, or even shot to death. This is what happened to a man in 2019. On January 28th, the man attempted to get into Area 51. He was then chased down by some cars for eight miles. When he got out of his car, he was shot dead. Another case would be the two YouTubers that were arrested in September of 2019 after they tried to sneak into Area 51 and were caught recording the premise. I know we all want to know what really goes on in there, like if they got aliens or whatnot, but curiosity kills the cat. Just saying. In our seventh spot, we have the Devil's Hole. With a name like that, maybe it's best you don't visit it. So the Devil's Hole is located in a national wildlife refuge in Nevada. You can tour the area, but access to the Devil's Hole itself is off limits. They have a sign and a fence guarding the area, and the sign reads as so. Due to the scientific importance of this area and its fragile nature, unauthorized entry is prohibited. Yes, they want to protect the ecosystem, but also so it is so dangerous to enter there. So Devil's Hole is like a little hole of water. When you dive in, it's filled with complex underwater caverns. Back in 1965, one night a group of four friends decided to hop the fence and explore the Devil's Hole. It was Paul, David, Bill, and Jack. Jack was on the lookout while the three dove in, but Paul never resurfaced. As a result, David and Bill both went back under to look for him, but then David never resurfaced. To this day, their bodies have never been found. Moving on to number 6, we have Ramry Island. Tourists are banned from ever visiting this island, because chances are your vacation will take a deadly turn if you decide to go there. This island is home to thousands of saltwater crocodiles, and they weigh around 2,000 pounds. Even the small ones pose a threat to humans. They have the capability of killing someone twice their size. On top of that, they are highly aggressive and will attack anyone that enters their habitat. In fact, the most number of fatalities in a crocodile attack took place at Ramry Island. In 1945, British soldiers drove the Japanese fighters off the main area of the island, forcing them to flee into the marshy area surrounding the island. One problem, those marshes were filled with hungry crocodiles. As a result, 500 soldiers were killed by these crocodiles. So yeah, maybe don't go to this island unless you want to be crocodile dinner. And of course, there's a number of stories of tourists going to this island and then being attacked and killed by these beasts. In our number 5 spot today, we have Bohemian Grove. Bohemian Grove is a privately owned campsite in Monterio in California and is the home to the wealthy and exclusive Bohemian Club. It 
comes as no surprise that this club is only for men, despite the few dire attempts at including women. Every year, there is a two-week-long retreat that the club hosts on the private grounds, and while there have been four women who have been invited to the club as honorary members, the women are never invited to the Grove. Because of this weird ban and just the entire super strange nature of the whole ordeal, both the club and the Grove are part of many conspiracy theories. There has been no shortage of outsiders trying to sneak into the Grove to see what the heck is going on there and to get to the bottom of what this secretive club is really hiding. To be honest, there's definitely something sketchy going on with this whole thing because it really just does give off the weirdest vibes. And at number four, we have Vortex Spring. Vortex Spring is known for having pretty complex diving caves, but only those that have a diving certificate or are accompanied by an experienced diver can go there by themselves. In the 1980s, 13 people died in the vortex. There's one area in the underwater caves that are considered so deadly that it's blocked off, and people are prohibited from entering there. It's got this creepy warning sign with the Grim Reaper, and it's often locked with a gate. It's just far too easy for people to get lost and drown in there. But that didn't stop Ben McDaniel. On August 18th, 2010, Ben was seen entering the water near the caves and was never seen again. This case is quite strange, like there's a lot of pieces to it. Some say he faked his death because he owed the IRS a lot of money, and also he had a failed marriage, so maybe this was his way of starting over. Or Ben really did get lost in the caves and drowned, but his gear or body have never been found. In our third spot, we have the Bolton Strid. The Strid near Bolton Abbey is said to be the most dangerous stretch of water in the world. Just by looking at it, you wouldn't even think it's dangerous. I mean, the current isn't even that fast. But below the water surface are strong undercurrents that will toss you back and forth against the sharp, jagged rocks until you die. It's also fairly deep and it could just suck you down until you drown. In fact, it has a 100% fatality rate. Everyone that has gone or fallen in have never made it out alive. Their bodies also have never been found. There are a number of stories of people trying to leap across the river only to slip and fall in. In one case, there was a newlywed couple visiting the Strid. However, upon trying to cross the Strid, the bride fell in, and the groom fell in also trying to save her. As a result, there are a number of warning signs all around the area trying to warn people of the Strid's dangers. But of course, a lot of people ignore the signs since the Strid is so deceiving and looks pretty safe. In our second spot, we have North Sentinel Island. The reason why you can't visit this island is because it is home to a tribe that will kill anyone who dares to intrude on their land. They live their own life completely isolated from the rest of the world. In fact, they still live a hunter-gatherer lifestyle. But a man named John Allen believed that with the power of God, he would be able to convert them to Christianity and help them. He believed that this island was Satan's last stronghold on Earth. So in November of 2018, he headed out to the island. Now, the people that took him there knew of the dangers and really, really, really didn't want to. But he was so insistent that they finally gave in. In fact, they were later arrested for doing so. John's first attempt at making contact with them didn't go as planned. As soon as he stepped foot on the island, several men came charging at him, firing arrows. So he fled. But on November 16th, he tried again. He got a fisherman to drop him off alone, and that was the last time anyone had ever seen him. When people went back there for him, they saw the tribe members dragging his dead body with a rope. And in our number one spot, we have the Secret Cave. It was the evening of August 17th, 2005, and five friends were having dinner together. They were Scott McDonald, J. Blake Donner, Jennifer Lynn Galbraith, Ariel Singer, and Stephen Hunley. While eating, the group got to talking about this secret cave, which was a legend where they were from. It's all about this cool secret cave slash hangout spot. Rumor has it, that's where human sacrifices were made, etc. But of course, no one thought it was a real cave. That's when Jennifer said that it was real and that she had been there before. The friends, not really believing her, asked her to bring them there. And so they did. So basically, up in the mountains by Brigham Young University, there was this small opening to a cave. The entrance was in the shape of a Y. But in order to get to the secret hangout spot, Jennifer told them they would have to dive down one area 
through this underwater tunnel to the other side where there was an air pocket. The tunnel was 15 feet and the gap they would have to swim through was 20 inches wide. So it was just enough for people to squeeze through. On top of that, someone had put a rope in the water so you could just pull yourself underwater with. So that's what the four of the friends did. Stephen Hunley decided to stay back. He waited for the group for about an hour, and then he decided to call for help. And when police arrived, they were horrified at what they saw. So it seems like the group of friends successfully managed to get to the other side, but they couldn't make it back. The police ended up pumping out the water so that they could enter. And that's when they found all four of the friends' bodies stacked up against each other. It seems as if the person leading, who was Jennifer, got stuck on the way out and then she drowned. It would then be impossible to swim over her. So then the second person that went swimming was stopped at Jen's body and they couldn't get back out because then the third person was coming in. So everyone was just blocked in this small tunnel. Slowly but surely, all of them drowned in this small dark cave. For safety reasons, this cave is no longer accessible. Starting off this countdown, we have the Stairway to Heaven. The Stairway to Heaven, or the Haiku Stairs, is a very steep hiking trail that was closed in 1987. It was closed because of lack of maintenance of the trail and it was deemed unsafe. It's considered one of Hawaii's most dangerous trails, but that didn't stop 18-year-old Daylin Pua from hiking out there. On February 27th, 2015, Daylin went out for a hike. He had previously told his grandmother, who he was visiting, that he wanted to do so, but she warned him against it. Also, you can get charged if you do trespass, but that didn't deter Daylin. On that day, he told his grandma he was going out for a hike, but she didn't think he would dare to go there. She was wrong. The last time anyone saw him was around 11 a.m. when he sent a photo to his family of him at that location he never returned home. Of course, there are a number of theories as to what happened to him. Maybe he fell while on the hike, since the area is dangerous. But then again, his body or bones were never found. Another theory is that he was kidnapped or killed by someone. In the photo he sent to his family, it said you can see a man lurking in the foliage. Was this his killer? Sadly, we might never solve this case. In our ninth spot, we have Discovery Island. Discovery Island is now an abandoned park by Disney that opened in 1974. But before I go any further, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, comment down below, you know the drill, it really helps us out. It was located in the middle of Bay Lake by Disney World. In order to get to it, visitors would take a boat from Disney World. The park was known for having an incredible amount of exotic birds from all over the world. The attraction was basically like a miniature zoo, but in 1989 it was revealed that Disney wasn't taking proper care of the animals on the island, and the employees were caught doing some messed up things to the animals. In 1998, Animal Kingdom opened and people just really didn't care about Discovery Island anymore. The island closed in 1999 for undisclosed reasons and all of its animals got moved to Disney's Animal Kingdom. Now the island is just completely abandoned. Its structures are covered in nature, but it's illegal to go there. In fact, you're not allowed to get within 50 feet of its shoreline, and you'll be arrested if caught trespassing. There are a number of examples of people getting arrested for trying to get on this island. Just last year, some man was arrested after he was found camping out there. In April of 2020, Richard McGuire was arrested for visiting the island as well. Kind of makes you wonder why that area is so highly patrolled. Coming in at number eight, we have Lascaux Caves in France. The Lascaux Caves are a series of complex caves located in northwestern France. Back in the day, four teens were exploring the caves with their dog when they found a narrow entrance into a cavern. In the cavern, they discovered a plethora of prehistoric cave paintings. These paintings are anywhere from 15,000 to 17,000 years old. They mainly depict animals. In 1948, the caves were open to the public, but in 1963, they were closed. The artificial light was fading the vivid colors of these paintings. And then algae started growing all over them. So in order to preserve the history, they prevent anyone from going there. The only exception is a small number of scientists. They can go there only a few days a month in order to study the paintings. Other than that, no one else can go. Moving on to number seven, we have room 39 in North Korea. North Korea has its fair share of secrets. Kim Jong-un likes it that way. He doesn't want anyone knowing what he's up to. Now, room 39 is a top secret, highly guarded location 
inside of the Workers' Party building in Pyongyang. Journalist Kelly Olson said, and I quote, Room 39 is one of the most secret organizations in arguably the world's most secretive state. Only a few select people have access to this room. It was created in the late 1970s and no one really knows what goes on in there. But it's reported that it's very critical to the Kim family. And I'm sure you can imagine what the guards would do if you were caught trespassing or attempting to break into the room. It would not end pretty. Moving on to number six, we have Bohemian Grove. Bohemian Club is this group of rich men who meet in the Bohemian Grove in California every July. Among the attendees are US presidents, government members, and business leaders. You get the picture. Some very wealthy men. Some say that this is like a cult. Everything that goes on there is top secret. Apparently, what happens at the Bohemian Grove stays at the Bohemian Grove. In 2000, filmmaker Alex Jones and his cameraman snuck into the camp and filmed a Bohemian Grove ceremony. It was called the Cremation of the Care. Sounds very creepy. Here's a section of what he captured. Again, Midsummer sets us free. <laughs> We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with Bouvet Island. Now here's the thing with Bouvet Island. You can visit it, but it would be a death wish if you did. Bouvet Island is extremely isolated and it's almost completely covered by a glacier. Its nearest inhabited land is 1600 miles away. One way to get there is by boat, but it would take very long and you would be facing extreme weather conditions while doing so. As a result, most expeditions are done by helicopter. Even then, if the weather suddenly changes, you're basically screwed because the island is so remote and far away from other pieces of land. But in 1964, a lifeboat was found abandoned at this island. How did it get there? How could this little boat survive crossing the southern ocean? It's a mystery that still baffles many. But also, where did the passengers of the boat go, if they had any? We got no clue, just a couple of theories. In our fourth spot, we have Pripyat, Ukraine. I mean, it's kind of obvious why this one's on the list. So Pripyat was a city in Ukraine that had a population of 49,000 people. However, on April 27th, 1986, all residents were forced to evacuate following the Chernobyl disaster. Pripyat was the most affected by the Chernobyl nuclear disaster since they were the closest to the power plant. They were the ones most exposed to the radioactive chemicals. Due to the radiation, the city will be left untouched for thousands of more years until it's safe enough to return. But of course, there have been a number of explorers that have gone there to check out the city's ruins. But like I said, because of the radiation levels, it's deemed too unsafe to go to, and people are warned not to. In our third spot, we have the Paris Catacombs. The Paris Catacombs are a series of tunnels located under Paris, France. In the 18th century, the catacombs were created when the Paris cemeteries were full. They needed a place to bury the dead. As a result, they buried the dead underground in a series of tunnels. There is approximately 150 miles of tunnels in a maze-like fashion, making it extremely easy to get lost. Ever seen the movie As Above, So Below? Now, a portion of these tunnels are still accessible today and have attracted numerous explorers. But there's an area in the Paris catacombs that is completely blocked off from the public. It's because it's extremely easy for you to get lost with the number of pathways they have. Also, there's over 6 million people buried there, so maybe not go there. A couple of years ago, two young explorers went into the band area and went missing for three full days. Finally, the authorities, along with their team of rescue dogs, found the boys in the tunnels. Thankfully, they both survived, only suffering from hypothermia. It could have ended much worse. In our second spot, we have Pluto's Gate in Turkey. Back in the day, it was believed that anything that entered this area would be killed by the god Pluto himself. On a number of occasions, animals like bulls would be led into this cavern. They would never make it back out alive. As a result, people were terrified to go anywhere near there. But a couple of years ago, it was discovered what was actually causing this. Scientists noticed that at night, the CO2 concentration would become heavier in the air. CO2 is not normally toxic, but in high concentrations, it is, and will starve the body of oxygen. 
So yes, if you go there, the level of CO2 is so strong that you could die from asphyxiation. It's super dangerous, and as a result, people are banned from going there. And in our number one spot, we have Wyndham, Australia. Located northeast of Perth, Australia, Wyndham is considered one of Australia's deadliest towns. This is because of its blue asbestos problem. In 1937, blue asbestos was discovered in the city's gorge. Years later, miners were unearthing tons of asbestos from the ground. It wasn't until 1978 that the government started pushing people out of their homes. They realized how deadly it was for them to be living there. It was increasing their risk for cancer, and in some cases, people were already developing lung cancer just from living there. Now, it would cost the town about $2.43 million to get rid of this asbestos problem, so instead of doing that, they just shut down the town completely. In 2006, the government turned off power to the town and had its name removed from maps and road signs. In fact, all roads that once led to this town are now closed off. If you do choose to enter this town, you'll find tons of huge warning signs advising you to turn back. Starting off this countdown, we have the Tomb of Jin Shi Huang. In 1974 in China, a group of farmers came across something quite amazing. So they were digging a well when they dug out a life-sized terracotta soldier. After that, archaeologists spent four decades excavating this site. They found an army of thousands of these terracotta soldiers. Experts say there's more than 8,000 of them. The soldiers are guarding the tomb of Jin Shi Huang, oh, which is off limits to everyone, including scientists. Why? Well, it's rumored that it's protected by deadly booby traps. Not only that, there's a high concentration of mercury in the tomb which is very deadly for anyone if they entered without the proper equipment. So the tomb is off limits for any and everyone. Moving on to number nine, we have Diego Garcia. Diego Garcia is an island in the central Indian Ocean, part of the British Indian Ocean Territory. In 1966, the people on the island were employees as contract farmers, working on coconut plantations. But in 1968 to 1973, the farm workers were kicked off the island by the UK government, so that the US slash UK military could have a joint base on the island. Now, it is off limits to everyone except official personnel, and it's highly, highly guarded and secretive. In fact, some believe it was used by the CIA to torture prisoners. But since it's so closed off to us, we will never know what truly went on over there. Moving on to number eight, we have North Brother Island. North Brother Island is a 20 acre island located in New York City's East River. The island was once home to Riverside Hospital, which was built to quarantine people with smallpox. Since the island was so isolated from others, they thought it was perfect to house the sick there. All those who died there were stored in the island's morgue. Then in 1943, they used the hospital to house people with tuberculosis. From 1951, it served as a rehabilitation center for drug addicts. But by the 60s, it was abandoned. Now that island stays that way and is off limits to the public. The island is very dangerous to visit because the buildings are rotted and deteriorating. Access is forbidden unless you have proper authorization. In our seventh spot, we have the sewer system. So in July of 2018, two boys in the North Hamptons decided to explore their town, which is fine but they decided to get into the town's sewer system and explore it from down below. I don't know what drew them in, that must have been super, super stinky. Now, Northampton sewer system is actually known to be quite complicated and referred to as caverns. So it's no shocker that they prohibit people from entering. And also not a shocker that this pair got lost down there. After being lost for several hours, they were rescued. Thankfully, the rescue team was able to locate their whereabouts and help them get out of the tunnels. Bad news is, they didn't smell the greatest after all this happened. Moving on to number six, we have Edgewater Medical Center. This abandoned medical center in Chicago is a very popular spot to urban explorers. In fact, a little fun fact, this is the place that both Hillary Clinton and serial killer John Wayne Gacy were born. Now, securing the building has always been a problem. No matter how many signs or barricades they put up, people will always find a way to get in. In fact, now they have security guards monitoring the area to prevent people from trespassing. 
But still, this doesn't ward off the curious minded. One person that entered this banned location is urban explorer Mike Kinsk. He said he found blood samples, some labeled with serious infectious diseases. He also found several boxes of death records dating back to the 90s. There is apparently also personnel files, test results, x-rays, and more still inside the hospital. In fact, these files were said to be destroyed, but clearly they weren't. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with Paviglia, Italy. This island has a very, very dark past. During the Middle Ages, when the plague took the lives of thousands, this island was used as a dumping ground for the bodies. According to some reports, 50% of the island's soil consists of human remains. Then, in the 1920s, the island had a mental institution, but the hospital workers were corrupt and often conducted experiments on the patients. Then, over the years, the island has been bought and sold three times. The first two owners sold the island after witnessing some paranormal activity. It's said that the souls of the deceased haunt the island. In fact, to this day, this island is known as one of the most haunted places on Earth. Now the island is just abandoned and no one is allowed to visit it. I mean, you can, but you have to fill out a bunch of paperwork. In the end, it's not really worth it. In our fourth spot, we have Centralia. Ah, yes, this place is making its way back on another one of my lists. Centralia is an abandoned town located in Pennsylvania. It was once a populated town. However, a lot of residents were forced to leave due to unsafe living conditions. This all started after a coal fire ignited underground. This fire has been burning for almost 50 years, and it's predicted to continue for another 200 years. As a result of this fire, tons of sinkholes have formed, and hot smoke is released underground, and carbon monoxide has filled some of the residents' basements. In some parts of the town that are affected, it is said that the ground beneath them has reached up to 900 degrees Fahrenheit. 400 degrees Celsius. But even that won't deter some people. In fact, seven residents still live there. They refuse to move out of their home. But the US government has done their job to try and erase this city. They took away any signs directing people to this town, removed the town's zip code, and forced most of the residents out. But people still go there to explore, which isn't the best idea. In our third spot, we have Gilman, Colorado. Located in southeastern Eagle County, Gilman was a beautiful town located on the edge of a cliff. But that wasn't the reason why this town was considered dangerous. Around 1984, the Environmental Protection Agency discovered hazardous levels of arsenic, cadmium, copper, lead, and zinc in the soil, surface, and groundwater of this area. It was so toxic that they demanded a full evacuation of this town. Now if you visit the area, you will see tons of signs warning trespassers. The signs say things like hidden and visible dangers and risk of injury or death. So don't go there. In our second spot, we have the Doomsday Vault. I did not know this was a thing, but there is a Doomsday Vault located in Norway. This vault contains 309 samples of seeds from all over the world. So just in case of a huge disaster, people can get to this vault and still be able to rebuild society and, you know, make food. These seeds are highly, highly protected. Only a few people have access to this building. And they are only allowed to go inside on days when they are accepting new seeds. So don't mess around with this vault, okay? It's humanity's lifeline. And in our number one spot, we have Vanguard for India. This next place is said to be the most haunted place in India. Back in the 17th century, it was once a thriving town, home to 10,000 people. But rumor has it, all residents deserted their homes overnight. Why? Because it's haunted, duh. So there are two legends surrounding this place. Number one, there was a man named Mado Singh, and he was given permission to build this fort by the king under one condition. The fort never cast a shadow over his house. He said if this happened, then the city will perish. So this guy obeyed his command and made sure the fort never did. But Singh's successor ignored this and built the walls up higher. This cast a shadow over his house. 
and that's when the king's curse started. The second legend surrounds a princess named Ratnavati. Now, a man named Tantric Singha fell in love with her beauty, but she kept refusing his love and advances over and over again. What she didn't know was that he was a magician of the dark arts. So he used a love potion on her by putting it in her perfume. But the princess wasn't dumb. She figured this out and then poured the potion over a huge boulder. This made the dude furious and he placed a curse on the town. And now it's still believed to be cursed slash haunted. In fact, entry is banned for all foreigners. You need a special permit to get entry into this fort. And in no means can you ever be there before sunrise and after sunset. According to locals, three men decided to stay there after sundown. And things went south. One of the three guys fell into a deep well. Thankfully, he was rescued, but on their way to the hospital, all three of them got crushed in a freaky road accident and they died. Could this be the fort's curse? Starting off this countdown, we have the abandoned building. Abandoned buildings are urban explorers' playgrounds, except you have to be extra careful. There's a reason why some of these buildings are abandoned to begin with, and over the years have been subjected to structural failure. In January of 2019, a 21-year-old man and his friends went to explore an abandoned building in Detroit. Entry into the building was banned. Obviously, it was abandoned. In fact, it was getting ready to be demolished. That night, the group of friends decided to play hide and seek. He got separated from his group of friends and they couldn't find him. They decided to come back the next morning and continue to look for him. That's when they found his body on the first floor. Police concluded that he fell through an elevator shaft and to his death, he fell all the way from the ninth floor. That is absolutely terrifying. But before I go any further, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up because it really helps us out and I appreciate it. And at number nine, we have University Women's Club. And guys, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel because you know what? It really helps us out, so thank you. This is a female only club that was founded in 1888 London. It was a space for women to come to just relax and unwind, not having to worry about their household duties or whatever. It was also a professional space where business meetings would take place. This club also offered 22 bedrooms so that you could stay if need be, and two big event rooms should you ever need to rent them out for private parties or whatever. This place was open for all women of all ages, just no men. Moving on to number eight, we have the International Club of Paris. The Women's International Club of Paris, or Le WIC de Paris, was a club open to any and all women. Its goal is to get women of all different nationalities living in or around Paris to join this club and share their culture with others in the group. The group does things such as film screenings, book clubs, and would do activities like gymnastics and learn other languages. This club is pretty big. They have 252 members from 52 different countries. Again, there's no men allowed in this club. It's strictly women coming together to learn more about each other and form connections. They also say that the space is non-political and non-religious. They just want everyone to get together as one. Moving on to number seven, we have Noiva de Cordeiro. This is a remote Brazilian village that is home to 600 women. Now, this village is interesting for a number of reasons. Number one, most of the women living there are 20 to 35 years old, like that's pretty young. On top of that, they are known to be all stunningly beautiful. Now, this village is a bit different than the other places on this list. Men are allowed to visit, but typically they don't live there. But the only time they can visit is on the weekends. They're forced to work away from home and that's the only time that they have to visit. But most of the women that live there run the show. They work in the field and manage all the village's finances. They're like the bosses. Coming in at number six, we have New Woman Space. Founded by Wong and Sandra Hong, New Woman Space, located in Brooklyn, is a place where women can come together as one. It's located in Williamsburg and is specifically for entrepreneurs or those looking to collaborate with other women. At this location, they have book club meetings and yoga classes. The founder Wong says, and I quote, our location means there is no shortage 
advantage of women submitting new ideas for classes and workshops, who want to host events in every realm you can think of, and those who have found comfort and strength in knowing there is a community space for them. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with Dulce Base. This one is the definition of creepy. Just get ready for it. So the small town of Dulce in New Mexico is said to have a secret underground facility where they do a number of wacky experiments. The first claim of this base was back in the 1930s. From there, the rumors began to skyrocket. Now it's believed that there is a seven story compound beneath the city. And that's where there are human animal hybrids and human alien hybrids. Yeah, it's crazy. This base has very tight security and is regarded as one of the top forbidden places in the world. Moving on to number four, we have the sorority. And no, I'm not talking about like a college or university sorority here. The sorority is a club only for women. It's described as an online network for professional women who want to collaborate and inspire others. Most of the meetings take place online. But if you live in London, some members meet regularly at different venues in London. Apparently, there are a couple members of royalty in this club. Now, if you are a female and this interests you and maybe you want to join the club, too bad, too sad. You can only get in by invitation only, so it's a pretty secretive club. On top of that, you have to fill out their pledge which seems a little culty to me. But anyway, it seems like they want only the elite of the elite to be a part of this club. In our third spot, we have the Secret Society. Back in the 1840s, women were caught for having a number of different secret societies in New York. These societies were legit top secret. They didn't want men finding out about them at all. But this plan failed. In 1847, four of these secret societies were caught. Back then, it was a pretty big deal. Now, there's not much out there on these societies like what went down since it was so long ago. But apparently the government tried to break them up if they heard about them. When four clubs got exposed, they realized just how big they were. One society had 2,000 members. Like that's insane. But yeah, with the amount of members, word was bound to get out sooner or later. In our second spot, we have Woman's Land. Now this community spells its name Woman's, as in W-O-M-Y-N-S, instead of M-A-N-S, because they literally want nothing to do with men. No man in the name, no man ever allowed in the community. Now this community was fairly large. It started as a social movement in the 1970s in the US, Australia, New Zealand, and Western Europe. Basically, it was a group of women that wanted to escape the patriarchal society. So they decided to make their own community. Many of them still exist today. Back then, these women lived in the woods on private land. And honestly, a lot of people didn't know they existed. Some were meant specifically for women that identified as lesbian. Others were for women traveling across countries alone and needed a safe place to stay. Nowadays, there are still a few of these communities left. These women live in small cabins or shacks. The only issue is that these women are getting older and need a new generation of younger women to come and keep these communities alive. But not a lot of younger women are interested in this. And in our number one spot, we have Super She Island. Located off the coast of the Baltic Sea, the Super She Island is a secret vacation destination for only women. It's owned by a woman named Christina Roth. She first discovered this island while on vacation in Finland. From there, she purchased it and spent months doing massive renovations. Now the island has four renovated cabins that can hold up to 10 women. The whole purpose of this island is to look after the wellness of the female mind, bodies, and souls. While on the island, you can partake in a number of activities including yoga, meditation, kayaking, and hiking. Now, don't be fooled. It's not like you can just book a trip there and you're all set. No, you actually need to fill out an application. On the form, you have to write to Christina why you want to go to the island. And she is specifically looking for people that aren't just writing BS, but like actually truly want to go to the island to better themselves. Starting off this countdown, we have Umoja Village. Located in Kenya, this village was founded in 1990 by a woman named Rebecca Lolosoli. It was created as a safe haven for homeless women, women trying to escape forced 
marriages or survivors of violence, etc. The idea came to her while she was in the hospital after being attacked by a group of men. This village is barred off by a fence of thorns to try and prevent men from entering. There are around 27 women and 200 children living at this village. The women that live there still work so they can afford clothes, food, and their shelter. On top of that, their village is open to female tourists with hope that they will come in and buy some of their jewelry. They also charge a fee for anyone that wants to come in. Moving on at number 9 we have Prochiska Brana. Now this is considered one of the most spectacular landmarks of the Czech Republic. In fact, it's the biggest sandstone arc in Europe. Basically, it's a narrow rock arc. The arc is 16 meters above the ground and 26 meters long. But in 1982, the government stopped allowing people to visit there. Because of erosion and the amount of visitors, this arc was becoming way too dangerous. In fact, they believe that any time it can just collapse on its own. Which is why no one can visit the Ark anymore. It's definitely not safe. In our 8th spot, we have the Chapel of the Ark of the Covenant. Located in Ethiopia, this place is said to contain the two stone tablets that God gave Moses containing the Ten Commandments. It is also said to contain a pot of manna as well. Manna was given to people by God to sustain them while on their long travels throughout the desert. So yeah, if it's true and they do have those, then that's a pretty huge deal. But here's the one thing. Only one priest, and one priest only, is allowed to view the Ark. It's said that if anyone else sees it, then they will implode. And I don't think anyone wants to implode, so I doubt anyone has even tried to take that risk. In our seventh spot, we have Mesgorye, Russia. Believe it or not, but this is an entire town that's closed off to the public. The town was founded in 1979 and is a nuclear missile site. But that's unconfirmed. That's just what the rumors say. It's said that this place is home to automatic missiles that can be activated remotely. If you try to get into this town, well, good luck because it's heavily guarded and top secret. The only information that we have on this place is from images from satellite imagery. Now, the Kremlin claims, and I quote, the site is used for mining an emergency bunker for Russian leaders and a vault for the nation's treasures. We don't know if that's true or not, but hopefully we will never find out if it's really a nuclear site or whatnot. Moving on to number six, we have Krakow, Italy. Krakow, Italy was once a beautiful city home to a number of residents. Sadly, it was abandoned towards the end of the 20th century. This was due to a number of natural disasters that destroyed the town. The first natural disaster occurred in 1963 when a bunch of landslides affected the area. This is a result of the city being built on a cliff 1300 feet off the ground. And also, they had some sewer and water system issues. Then in 1972, a flood struck the area and made the situation so much more worse. Then in 1980, there was an earthquake and that left the city completely abandoned. Now the area is surrounded by a locked gate. It's said to be a ticking time bomb. At any second, it could just completely crumble. But here's the thing. It's a very popular filming location. In fact, some scenes from the film The Quantum of Solace were filmed there. So although you're not allowed to go there, they make an exception for film crews. But obviously, they have very strict rules that they need to follow. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the female-only parties. This next city, located in Colombia, is famous for having a men's curfew night. Basically, after a certain time at night, men are banned from leaving their homes. Literally, banned. Like, you could be fine for breaking this rule. Meanwhile, the women are free to roam the streets. On these nights, there are women-only concerts, film shows, and parties. Fire and police stations are taken over by female only crews. It's a time for women to just, you know, let loose and have fun. According to the mayor who created this idea, he said these female only nights will reclaim public space for the women of Bogota and help men to get to know their homes. Coming in at number four, we have the Island of Dolls. You all know this island by now. I have talked about it before because it's just so damn creepy. So this island is located in Mexico City and just as its name suggest it's filled with dolls. These dolls are hanging from trees and buildings. They're just everywhere. Also, since they've been hanging for quite some time, they are covered in dirt and bugs, making them even creepier. Now, you're probably wondering how this place came to be. 
So back in the 1950s, a man named Don Julian started to hang dolls from trees as a way to protect himself against evil spirits. Paranormal things kept happening to him there, so he would hang dolls everywhere with the idea that they would scare the souls of the deceased away. Another version of the story claims that a girl mysteriously drowned there. And now the dolls are possessed by her spirit. In fact, some people say that they have seen the dolls move their limbs and open and close their eyes. So this man spent more than 50 years hanging dolls. Now it's abandoned and looks something straight out of a horror movie. Of course, urban explorers have trespassed out of sheer curiosity. In our third spot, we have the Proving Ground. Located in Utah, the Dugway Proving Ground is the main biological and chemical weapons testing site for the US Army. Apparently, this base also contains top secret US military research documents. As a result, it's a very top secret facility. In 1968, something controversial actually occurred at this base. I've talked about this before, but basically a high speed jet sprayed 320 gallons of nerve gas VX around the air in a test. This is so deadly that 10 milligrams can kill people instantly. Anyways, it sprayed in an area near a farm. And the next day, thousands of sheep were found dead. But the facility denied that it was their fault and said that they weren't testing chemicals that day. But they paid the rancher who lost his sheep over $300,000 and tried to keep the situation hush hush. But that didn't work and people are like, what is going on over there? Sadly, we'll never know what's actually going on. It's like Area 51. If you try to trespass, you can be shot down or arrested. In our second spot, we have Vault B. This vault is located in Padma Bhaswami Temple, a Hindu temple located in India. It was built in the 16th century as a holy shrine to Maha Vishnu. Later on, the kings of Travancore renovated it. Now, this temple contains six vaults, five of which have already been opened, and it contained up to one trillion dollars worth of treasures. Yeah, these treasures are from the 16th century and include gold and jewels, and you name it. But no one wants to open the last vault, referred to as Vault B. Why? Well, legend goes that it's cursed. Locals tell of a story of a man that tried to enter this vault but failed after a cobra came out of nowhere and killed him. So they believe that this vault is protected by a fatal curse. Another legend says that the vault is connected to the Arabian Sea. If you open it, it will flood the entire state. Not only that, but a man named T.P. Sundarajan, an Indian lawyer, made a petition to get Vault B open. However, in 2011, he unexpectedly passed away. People think that he was a victim of the temple's curse. And in our number one spot, we have the Cecil Hotel. I'm sure you guys have all heard about the Cecil Hotel, aka Hotel Death. It's the infamous place where Canadian college student Elisa Lam died and was later found in the hotel's water tank. Now, this hotel was founded in 1924 in downtown Los Angeles. In 1927, it opened up as a budget hotel. It had 19 floors and 700 rooms available. Originally, the hotel was meant for business travelers and tourists, but after the Great Depression, it became a budget hotel. Over the years, a number of deaths have occurred in the hotel. From murders to serial killers, the hotel is just plagued with darkness. Eventually, in 2017, the Cecil Hotel closed, and now it's off limits. But there are rumors that this place is haunted by Elisa or others that have lost their lives there. So urban explorers are determined to explore the now abandoned hotel. Take YouTuber Jake Weber, for example. He just recently posted several videos of him getting into the hotel and exploring it. He managed to bribe the security officer there and they let him and his friends inside for a couple of hours to explore and film. Guys, this, this is her room. This was her room. Starting 
kicking off this countdown, we have Rock House Mine. Back in 2018, three young adults decided to go explore the Rock House Powelton Mine in the town of Clear Creek, Virginia. They were Erica Teedway, Kayla Williams, and Cody Beverly. Now, to get into this abandoned mine, they had to crawl through a small ventilation shaft in the mine. But while exploring, they got lost and were walking around in the dark for hours. When these individuals did not return home, a search party was sent out for them. They were missing for five days until thankfully they were located. Erica was found first, she got separated from her two friends. 30 minutes later, Kayla and Cody were found together. After this, a statement was released warning urban explorers to stop entering abandoned mines. So yeah, maybe don't follow in their footsteps and go exploring abandoned locations. In our number nine spot today, we have Haji Ali Darga. This landmark is a mosque in Darga and was constructed in 1431. For a while, there was a ban placed on women being there before an arrangement was made which allowed women into the landmark, but the inner sanctum sanctorium was still off limits, unless of course you're a man. This restriction was said to be due to Islam and the fact that it is considered a sin for a woman to be in close proximity of the great grave of a Muslim saint. Or at least that's what the internet told me was the reason. This is another place that has seen many protests about the ban and there have even been petitions circling to have the rule changed, but this is one of the times it actually worked. In 2016, the Supreme Court ruled that they would allow women the equal right to pray and they began being allowed in all of the same areas, which of course was a huge win. In our number eight spot today, we have Mount Omine. This mountain is the home of the Yamabushi monks and is famous for its three tests of courage. The ban on women was placed in order to help remove thoughts of temptation from the monks as they practice their strict lifestyle. This one is slightly different from some of the others on this list, however, as there have been many females who have still gone here with no trespassing charges ever placed or really much outcry at all. They refer to the ban as a more voluntary situation. Both the temple and the local community call it a request rather than a rule or a law, and the request is in order to respect their tradition as well as, of course, like I mentioned before, to help them. As much as I really don't like being banned from a place, I feel like this is a more reasonable way to do it if we have to, but maybe that's because I don't live in Japan where this rule directly affects me, so let me know in the comments down below what you think about these kinds of bans. In our number 7 spot today, we have Okinoshima, this Japanese sacred island which is the home to the 17th century shrine of Okitsu. This island only has a population of one, which is the single employee of the shrine. He is one of two dozen priests who spend 10 day intervals on the island to pray and protect it from intruders. The rules state that only men can travel to and worship at the island's shrines. The men will strip naked and perform a cleansing ritual before they enter the island, and they honor the sailors who passed away in a naval battle near the island during the 1904-1905 Russo-Japanese War. It isn't exactly clear why women are banned from this island, but it has something to do with Shinto traditions. In our number six spot today, we have the Galaxy Water Park. This water park located in Germany has a ban on women that I simply cannot wrap my head around. While women aren't banned from the water park entirely, they are banned from the park's highest speed water slide. This ban came after the owner of the park determined that the water slide was causing what is being called intimate injuries, and apparently this only happens to women. Apparently the slide can hit speeds up to 45 miles per hour, and apparently six women complained of suffering injuries. I really am not sure the details surrounding whatever is going on here, but to be fair, I'm not exactly sure if I would like to know either. But according to a gynecological association, other than pregnancy, there shouldn't be any sort of medical condition that would prevent a woman from going on a water slide. When I started making this list, this really wasn't the type of thing that I imagined including because I never thought that this strange ban would even exist, but here we are. <laughs> We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with Varosha Cyprus. In the early 70s, Varosha was one of the most popular tourist attractions in the world. That was until 1974 when Turkey invaded Cyprus. As a result, the residents there fled for their lives. They were forced out of their home and never allowed to return. They lost everything. Now, since 1974, Varosha has been abandoned and under control of the Turkish military. The whole area is now fenced off and under constant supervision. If you try to break in, 
Well, the army patrols have orders to shoot on sight. So don't even try to visit the city. They are not afraid to take down trespassers. And there are some cases of this happening to innocent people. In our number four spot today, we have Lord Kartikeya Temple. This temple is located in India and was built in honor of, of course, Lord Kartikeya, who is the Hindu god of war. More specifically, the temple is paying homage to the celibate form of the Hindu deity. I guess with this knowledge, and also based on what video this is, you can guess what's going to come next. Women aren't allowed here. As this is a temple, it is of course for religious reasons, which are said to be why the rule came into place, but there's also a myth associated with this one. According to the myth, any woman who enters the temple will incur the deity's wrath and will be cursed. Considering the fact that he is the god of war, I feel like this might not be the one I wanna risk. You know, just in case. I definitely am not trying to get cursed. In our number three spot today, we have Lord Ayapa's temple. This is a temple that doesn't ban all women, but just those from 10 years old to 50 years old. This is another ban that has its roots in myths that surround the deity and the fact that he is celibate. Apparently the deity thought of women as a distraction from the vow of celibacy, but despite this, this is one rule that might just be on its way out. Apparently the government has recently become more vocal about favoring the decision to reverse this age restriction and instead allow women of all ages to enter the temple. The conversation has already reached the Supreme Court, which is huge. I totally understand that these decisions, especially these ones that have their roots in faith and religion, should not be taken lightly at all and of course take time to discuss, but I think it can be appreciated that the conversation is happening at all. In our number two spot today, we have Saudi Arabia. Okay, so of course the whole country isn't just men, so you might be wondering why this is on the list, but that is to do with the rules around travel. As a solo woman traveler, it would be extremely difficult to gain entry into the country. Women can be given visas for travel, but all female visitors must be accompanied by a male guardian. I don't make the rules. That's just how it is. Once in the country, women also aren't permitted to drive, and if you're heading there to visit someone's grave, better luck somewhere else because women are also banned from Saudi Arabian cemeteries. So if you're planning a trip anytime soon, there's just a few things to consider beforehand and many, many more if you're female. In our number one spot today, we have the Jain Temple. To end off our list today, we have another temple that doesn't have an outright ban on women, but just a few rules that of course are directed to affect women. Firstly, there's a very strict dress code, which seems fine and well, especially for a religious place, reasonable. But then we get into the more surprising rule, and that is that women who are menstruating are banned from entering the premises. I have a lot of questions about why, although I know it is because that is something that is seen as unclean, which I will not comment on, but my main question is to how exactly that is an enforceable rule. Either way, it is the rule, and unfortunately, I don't make the rules. Despite this being one of the more seemingly absurd rules on this list, it is good to know in advance if you ever had a plan to visit the temple. Mm -hmm.